Good afternoon, beautiful people, and welcome to the Little Things You Can Do podcast. On here, I talk about the little things that parents can do to help their children navigate this crazy and beautiful world. Tonight, I want to talk about parents inspiring their children, because we are living in a society where people, the media, and society itself can drag our children down. They can put our children into boxes because of your color, because of your gender, because of your disability. This is what you can do. So as parents, we've got to take that onus in our own hands and inspire our children. And I've got two backstories from, for the reason I'm doing this podcast. And my first one is Ben Carson. I love Ben Carson's story. I've read the book and I've watched the movie. And one other thing that, that the constant recurrence in the movie was his mother inspiring him. She constantly believing in her son. She, she stopped him from watching rubbish TV. She inspired him to read. She moved him into a better school. She constantly telling that boy, you can do this. And one of the statements, she says, everything that you need is already in you. And she, always, she she keeps saying it throughout that, throughout that movie. And I've watched that, that movie a few times. And I've only watched it probably like a few months ago. And it really dawned on me how she was the pillar that helped to build his resilience. And he even said his mother, she constantly believed in him. The other person that comes to mind is Ray Charles. Ray Charles lost his eyesight when he was about seven or eight. And his mother, she didn't put him in a cotton wool. She tell him, you, you're going to have to get this done. You're going to have to feed yourself and move around. And she inspired her son to carry on. So now if we look on social media, our children are seen quick. Everything is a quick fix. Everything is done instantly. And celebrities are, are telling us how they can make money, how they can lose weight, how they can do everything quickly. And our children are not being inspired by the right people. Our children are not being inspired for, for the longevity of life. Because somebody or something can inspire you for a 50-day challenge or a two-week challenge. And you might do something good. But will that thing carry you through life? And I think the responsibility lies with mothers, fathers, aunts, cousins, uncle, the family unit, the community inspiring your children. Letting your child know that whatever come. They can overcome whatever struggles they have now they can overcome it and sometimes as parents we might not have the education or the know-how how to inspire our children but what we can do is find books to in books that your children can read to inspire them or if you know somebody in your community who have achieved some stuff and they had to go through certain challenges in their life have the challenges in their life have them speak to your young boy or girl because sometimes our children don't listen to us but they will listen to someone else and if that person can inspire our children positively why not ask them to come and help your child the other thing is when i was growing up my grandmother she didn't she stopped school at 14 but ever so often when she especially when she was washing she would talk to me about things that i i can achieve and things that i should work towards and she had a limited education, but she, she knew what it meant to speak your child's future to them, inspire your children. The other thing that social media is doing, social media is putting our children into categories. You know, if you're a girl, you can't be an engineer. If you're a boy, you can't do this. If you have a disability, you can't achieve this. So because society is telling our children all these negative things, as parents, we have to like jump ahead and inspire them. I think from, 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 from your child born, you need to be speaking and prophesying good things over your child. Now, and the other thing is when you pray for your child, don't forget to pray for all the children in the world because we want blessings for everybody. But as parents, you can, and if you inspire your children, you can inspire your neighbor's children and your other family members' children, because that's our responsibility as parents. Not just to buy food and clothing, but we also got to set our children up and help them to build resilience. 
one of the things I'm realizing nowadays is that young children don't have resilience. And when I was growing up as a Jamaican, you have to have resilience because you've got to walk a mile and one mile to school or two miles to school. You can't leave your house and decide not to go to school because you would have a very sad evening. So just by walking to school, you build that resilience. Then you had some children who had to carry some water before to school before they get to school. That's another thing that builds resilience. Yeah, I remember there was time when I had to go to school in the morning, come back home for lunch, and go back to school in the height, the hot, hot sun in Jamaica. Now that builds resilience in me because if I don't get back to school, my grandmother is gonna know. And as I said before, you're gonna have a very sad evening. So most of us as parents, we had small things that was culturally built in us that give us resilience. Now we've come into a different country and our children don't have those little things that was used to build us up and they are struggling. Our children are giving up very, very easily. I, um, I think Friday we had an activity in school and this made me laugh. We had us to use the number one to five to make different combinations and the combination each side it's like a triangle and each side has to equal the same amount and when we look around the class we could see about five or six children who had stopped pulled away from the table and was doing something else they did not have the mental resilience to carry on and we notice it and and to be to be frank, it was mostly the boys that pull away, you know, about five or six boys, and they were the one that pull away from the table, and and they had given up. Now just imagine, if we don't start mold them and build resilience into them, so when he gets to fifteen, he's gonna give up on his GCSEs. When he gets to twenty one, he's gonna give up on work. So that's why I'm saying building your child resilience from the very young two, three-year-olds, speak it into them, push them to do things, teach them not to give up. Because we can give up in more than one way. We can give up mentally, where we just stop thinking. We can give up physically, where we physically pull ourselves away from the activity. So we've got to build our children up mentally, physically, and emotionally. And your child also have to have that, what's the word I'm looking for? That innate ambition. That, you know, I am ambitious enough to achieve this or to want this. Because a friend of mine said to me a few years ago, opportunity without ambition is waste. Because a lot of children in the, in the UK and America, they have, they have the opportunity that most children in Africa and other countries don't have. But because of lack of ambition, they are not achieving their, their greatest. Because society is not pushing them they're not achieving their greatest because they see things they get things so easily they're not achieving their greatness i'm going to give a, a, a parallel example if you check out let's say 10 years ago how jamaicans trained for the for the um for the olympic and how britain trained for the olympic britain they had the best facilities the best gyms the best of everything yes still when jamaicans turn up we perform why one, you when you leave your country, you got the entire country behind you expecting you to win. The other thing, if you don't win, you don't get money. While in the UK, if you come second or third, you still get some sense of um, you still get some accolade and you get some money. Other African and Caribbean countries, unless you turn up and come first, there is no um, there's no money for you. So you put both of them on the both of them on the starting line, they have different reasons for wanting to win. And I know, for me, I am very competitive. So whatever I start, I'm in it to win. I don't want to lose. I don't want to stop. So my resilience is I never give up. And we've got to install, instill those into our young children. As young as they are, we've got to push them. We're not going to ask them to be competitive and be nasty about it. That's not what I want. I want them to have a dream, have a plan. And as you go, you're going to meet hurdles. We're going to either go under them, go around them, jump them over or knock them down. But we're going to keep moving. 
because what's happening our young people are giving up too easily the moment they find something that they can't go they literally give up they give up mentally they give up physically and they give up emotionally and we can say oh they are weak but whose fault why these children are weak are we encouraging them to not give up have we inspired them enough have they seen us as parents not giving up because you can tell a child all the things that you want to tell them but if you are the parents who give up the moment something goes awry or something doesn't go your way those children are, your child is going to watch you and they're going to be the same but if you are the parents who no matter what happened you're always going you keep going you keep you never give up you keep pushing you keep having positive attitude your children or your child is going to have the same attitude because our children copy us they copy our mannerism they copy our resilience they copy everything from us so as parents we've got to start with ourselves first and then inspire our children if i go back to ben carson's story his mother couldn't read but she started learning to read because she was instead she was asking those boys to read and she couldn't read herself now we're not going to be angry at mommy she can't read but she know the value of reading hence she said to the boys put away the tv choose two shows that you can watch per week and you're going to read every day so her so because she couldn't do something she encouraged them to so as parents if you're finding yourself that okay i can't do this or, or i can't do something go back to school ask somebody to help you use youtube to help yourself so you can help your children it is your responsibility to inspire your children for tomorrow for the next day and for their future because when 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 you when they get leave your house they get to say 25 and they're on they I'm sorry they get to about 25 and they are on their own is those little messages that you said to them that's going to play back and keep them going like you know never give up always always keep moving one step at a time one hurdle at a time we can find little mantras to give to our children to encourage them to keep moving we can pray over our children because mo us as parents we know our children more than they know themselves and you know the things that your child is struggling with pray for that thing find something to inspire them to conquer that thing and when they conquer one you teach them to conquer the other one and the other one because we build our children brick by brick step by step and as they get older that's when the full the fullness of all our inspiration become alive because as they're growing we can't see them we're planting little seeds and when our children become men and women that's when they will have the the resilience to carry on because we've been inspiring them we've been encouraging them not to give up and the other thing i want to say to parents when your child is doing something at home let's say they're making their bed and they decide that they can't do it don't rush to help them guide them because the moment we start say okay leave it and i'll do it for you you're telling your child you can stop trying the moment you say okay leave it till tomorrow encourage them to carry on force them to carry on help them don't do it for them but help them to carry on because it's those little steps little achievement that our children need to so they can um, conquer the bigger things and i want to wind up my podcast for tonight because i think it's a very short one it is our responsibility as parents to help our children from birth until from birth until they are able to look after themselves i know that when some of them get to 13 15 they they think they know everything but we know better so it's our responsibility to constantly guide in them. I'm going to pray right now. And I'm going to pray, Lord, help us as children, as parents, that we may find the right words and the right action to inspire our young children. Father, give us the inspiration so we can inspire our children for today, for tomorrow, and for a lifetime. Good night, beautiful people. Nisha, 
signing off.